Your level of success is in direct correlation with your ability to rise above fear on a daily basis. What if you're scared of everything? <laughs> everything. I bet you didn't expect that question. I didn't. <laughs> what if you're scared of everything? Well, we're going to talk about where fear comes from. Okay. We're going to talk about how to overcome it and how to understand that you don't actually eliminate fear. You overcome it. So one of the big things that in working with a lot of people now, just that realization alone has become helpful for people because you're like, oh, I'm normal if I have fear, but I still want to act on things. That's actually where you want to be. And then we're going to go through a specific formula to overcome fear, not eliminate it, overcome it every single day. Every single moment that you have a situation where you're feeling crippled or held back by fear, this will overcome it for you 100% of the time. So you're telling me that you have fear too. I do. So I, I, can't, I can't just like stop having it. Does it just go away? doesn't just go away, unfortunately. That's really unfortunate. <laughs> That's like, not where I thought this was going today. <laughs> you were really hoping that uh, you just get rid of it? Yeah, it just goes away for good. No. I think that's also freeing. Yeah. Too, because when you look at successful people, you think, oh, they've somehow overcome fear and, or I'm sorry, eliminated fear. And since they've eliminated fear, that's why they're so successful. successful. But I have a bunch of fear, so I'm never going to get there. When in reality, it's that's not the truth at all. Yeah. They've just overcome it. They haven't gotten rid of it. Yeah. So, I mean, you're in a position where you've overcome fear a lot of times. But the question is, were you aware of it? I'm becoming more aware of it. The more that I practice it, I become more aware of it. The more you practice what? Uh, well, for me, fear, I, I look at fear more as like anxiety. That's how I deal with fear is in the form of anxiety. So I've gotten a lot of better, a lot better at overcoming that. So you actually, do you just call fear anxiety? Like if you have a feeling of fear, you, does that just become anxiety? I guess is a lot of the a time. classification for it? I, it's a classic, a classification. Like there is fear, but then there's also anxiety. And that's like, in my eyes, that is a branch of fear that okay. I deal with. Okay. So a lot of my anxiety is rooted in fears that I have. And some, a lot of the time they're not even like they're they're not they don't even feel like they're valid, if that makes sense. They feel like they're just made up like they don't even exist. I'm fearing things before they even happen or before they come to me or things that will never happen. Cool. So that right there is actually how I am defining fear and like where, where does fear actually come from? That feeling of what it really is, is the unknown. Yeah. So when you have an unknown, your brain will naturally fill it with fear because it's a survival tactic. Yeah. It's actually to keep you safe. So your brain just wants to make it to the next day. It knows what you did yesterday. You survived yesterday. So since you survived yesterday, if we do that again, we will be able to survive today. So let's just do what we did yesterday. That's why addictions are so difficult to break because the brain doesn't have any context. It just knows that you survived yesterday. So whether you're an addict or struggling with something that is clearly detrimental to your life, you did it yesterday. So if you do it today, you'll survive, even if it's actually doing the opposite to you in the long haul or over longevity. So fear comes from the unknown. So if you're going to make a change in your life, whether it's a habit or an addiction, like get off of an addiction, whatever it may be, when you don't have that anymore, you have an open space and the mind will fill it with fear because what if fear is worse or what is what, what, what if that result is worse than whatever was previous? So that's how I look at fear and define fear is knowing that if I'm going to do something different and I don't know the result yet because I haven't done it before, I know that I am going to have a pushback from myself internally of the what if. Yeah. I mean, I've like you said, I've been dealing with a lot of it lately and I wouldn't be where I am right now if I haven't overcome a lot of it. Like in the, this season that I'm in right now, there's so much change. There's so much unknown, like buying a house, starting a podcast, just self-employment. You have to be able to overcome that fear. Getting yelled at by strangers. Yeah. <laughs> Getting yelled at by strangers. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a new one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that People on the internet. Yeah. You're just, you, you're doing new things. Right. When you post a video, you never know what the reaction is going to be. If you let fear control you, you're never going to post that video in fear of what people, how people are going to react to it. So how have you been overcoming it? And we're going to get to the specific formula. There's a very specific formula that you can, that you can follow that I'm going to lay out for you and then give examples that way you can understand exactly how to follow it in your own life. But I'm interested in hearing how you've been overcoming fear right now, because in reality, what you're probably doing is practicing this, but you're just not aware of it. 
So this, hopefully this makes sense. Whenever I get the feeling of anxiety, and for me, that's like a pit in my stomach. Like it makes me feel nauseous and like unwell. Oh, so it's like bad. It's bad. Yeah. Like I will, I've been physically sick over it okay. before. I like when I was in high school, it was awful. I would, I would get sick, like throw up from it. So um, whenever I start to feel that, like begin like that knot in my stomach and I can't, it used to be, I would feel it and I wouldn't seek it out. I would like run in the other direction. I would do whatever I can to avoid that feeling. And I would like wallow in it almost. I would just like, this This is awful. Like, what am I going to do? Panic myself more. But now to overcome it, I, I look for the, the problem. I Like if I feel myself getting anxious or I feel fear, I will sit myself down and I will be like, okay, what has happened in the last 12 hours or the last 10 minutes to cause this? And I look for what triggered it. And then I, and then I think about why I'm feeling that way. That's amazing. You're practicing it. Yeah. Okay. So here's the formula for everybody. The formula for overcoming fear is it starts with awareness. So I'm going to label it as fear. I'm aware that I am fearful or feeling this right now. So you're an example. Your example is like, I have this feeling in the pit of my stomach right now and I'm going to call it anxiety. Why am I feeling that? So that is you being aware that, oh, how am I actually feeling right now? So the first step is fear. The first part of the equation is awareness of the fear. So what you do is you plus a pattern interrupt trigger thought, all right? And what that does is it puts you into action, and that action will result in fear killed. All right, so we're going to go through each step. So let's start with the awareness piece. Awareness of the fear. So let's talk about that pit feeling in your stomach. When you get that feeling, you have to be aware that you have it. Most people don't even ha have that or understand that. They just know that they don't feel good each day or they're not getting the results that they want. They're not even aware that the root cause of their lack of performance is their inability to overcome fear right now. So right now, what you just said is when I have this feeling, I sit down. So your pattern interrupt trigger thought is when I feel this, I then do this. So if this, then that. If I feel the uh, pit, pit of the stomach feeling... I then move into reflection. Why am I feeling this way? Yeah, because I used to distract myself. If I started to feel it, I would find any distraction to not feel it. But now I make myself, <clears throat> I make myself stop, sit, and think about it rather than distracting myself from the feeling. So you've moved into a space where sitting and solving it is far more valuable than running from it. Yes, and sometimes it even means I have to sit down and journal. Like, right, I have to sit down on, on, on a piece of paper and put a chart and write facts and then what my brain is telling me. Okay. I've done it so many times because a lot of the time when you have that fear or anxiety, it's so irrational, but your brain is making it up and forming this reality that doesn't even exist yet or will never exist. So this is incredible. So your if this, then that is pit of the stomach feeling, pattern interrupt thought to pattern trigger interrupt thought to, uh, to reflect on why that is. And your physical action step is journal. How do you feel after you're done journaling? Like a weight has been lifted off of me. Fear is killed. Yes, it is killed. That is how you overcome it. And then it. I can you move on with my day. You are actually practicing the exact formula to overcome fear no matter what it is. Because what happens is when you get to that point where you're at physical, physical action step, so for you is journaling, the physical action step, what that does is it switches your brain from filling the unknown with fear to exploration. Your brain switches to exploration and you cannot be fearful and exploring at the same time. Your brain can only do so many things at one time. So then your focus becomes exploring. So my question to you is I'd be very curious to know is while you're journaling, do A, do you instantly feel better? Like the second you get the pen to the paper and two, after you're done journaling, are you excited to do the thing that you were fearful of? Yes, I'm always excited to do the thing that I'm fearful of. I'm excited to go out and actively try something new. Because I used to be scared to try new things. Like I used to, any change I would like shell. I, I love what I'm used to. Like you were saying earlier, your brain just wants to do how it survived the next, the day before. Mm -hmm. So I used to do that. And yeah, now at first it was like, okay, I'm going to write. And I would start writing and then it would feel better like as I went on. But now as soon as I start writing, I as soon as I do it, it's like I immediately switch and I realize that I'm being irrational. That's incredible. So you have a, tr a trigger thought. You have a trigger thought. I, if I feel like this, I mean, I reflect. And to reflect, I move into an action step of write down and journal. And when you're done journaling, which is the physical action step, your brain switches from fear to explore. Yeah. That's exactly what you're going through step by step. So to overcome fear, it's really a three-step process. It's very simple, but you have to understand how to practice it. Like if the world, if the peop more people within the world were able to practice this on a daily basis, their productivity 
wouldn't just double or triple. Their results would immediately have a positive compounding effect. Their results would look like a hockey stick in a matter of a few weeks. Because right now they're operating in a space where they feel good 10% of the time. 20% of the time, they're only operating when they feel good. They're only trying to get results when they feel good. The other 80%, you labeled it anxiety. I often wonder how fear plays into people's anxiety and as if they're, are they just classifying fear as anxiety? So it's really interesting to me that you classified fear as anxiety earlier. Yeah, I think that fear is the root of anxiety. So it starts with a fear. So if you can find the fear that that's under all of that Mm -hmm. and get to it, your anxiety will go away. Do you need to find the fear? Or do you need to find the thing causing the fear that's underneath it? Find the thing causing the fear. Whatever it was, if it was like something that happened, a lot of the time it's some, it's an interaction that I had or something that happened that I didn't even think about. It was subconscious. So then I'm sitting there and I'm like, why do I feel like this right now? And I'm, I'm re going through the conversations that I've had today or the actions that have been taken until I find it. So I don't know. You, we've talked about anxiety before and I feel like you've, you're kind of like, I don't know. I've never really felt like that before. To me, I've, I've really thought about it in the last year or so. To me, it's like there's a little guy on your shoulder and he, the, the little Aisley on my shoulder is just always, it's not like it's, it's lying to me, like yeah. making a reality that doesn't even exist. And so when I sit down and I write, I write down facts. So say, I feel like the easiest example to use is like, you convince yourself your significant other doesn't love you. Like you're like, they don't like me today. So you write down on the paper all the things that actually happened. So like actions, things they've said, things that you've done. And then on the other side, you write down what your brain's telling you. And 90% of the time, they don't match in the slightest bit. Yeah, so the wolf in your head is far larger and far louder than whatever's happening in real far life. Far bigger. You. 90% of the time. It's, it's almost always like not realistic. So... I, I am I am curious on the anxiety piece if it's just fear that people are labeling as anxiety because there's so much fear around. I mean, you can go anywhere and you can find fear. Oh, of, absolutely. Of people who don't want to question authority or question uh, a person who is a uh, above them in so-called rank in their job. They don't want to question so and so strategy. They don't want to question so and so news or whatever it is. Like that's all rooted yeah. in fear. You should be okay to ask questions and, and tell the truth, right? Yeah. So anxiety was never accepted in my family. Okay. It, it wasn't something that was taught. It, it's it's not it's not something that was. Oh hey, it's just. Oh, that's just that's just anxiety, and everybody has it. It it, it wasn't accepted. It was solve the problem. Right. Everything in my household was always based around solve the problem, and how to progress, and how to practice, and how to get better. Since I was little. So I've never had anxiety. Yeah. But have I had fear? Yeah, every single day. And it can be as little as sending an email out to 40 or 50,000 people. Like, I don't know how how this is going to go, but my whole mission is to help. And for my mission to become accomplished, I have to take this step because that's my mission. And for people to get better, I have to complete my mission. Right. So therefore, that's how I work through it. So I've never classified it as anxiety. I've never had the pit of the stomach feeling, I think, to the extreme that you're talking about, especially if it's a day-to-day thing. Yeah. I mean, I I have plenty of friends who deal with it day-to-day on a much larger scale than I do. Like, just general anxiety, social, anywhere they're going, like, they just constantly feel like that. Mm -hmm. So I definitely do think there's a difference between fear and anxiety, but I think, because a lot of it, a lot of the anxiety part of it is just that it's irrational. Like the fears okay. that you're having are very irrational, but your brain can't sense the difference between what's reality and the what what's made up in your head. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Yeah, I've never I've never experienced that. Yeah. So maybe I'm not the best to speak on that specific type of, hey, this is the way that it's making me feel. Yeah. But I also wonder at the same time if it is just a classification of something that is something that people just aren't aware of. Yeah. Or aren't willing to solve. And make a change. I see both sides of this, which is why I'm like, I, I, I agree with you, obviously, because it works for me. Yeah. If I if I classify it as a fear or if I like root out that fear, my anxiety gets better. I've, I, I used to have it so bad where if I started to feel anxious that there was a fear, I like when I said I would run from it, I would it would take days for me to overcome it. Like I would literally not move for days. Wow. So it would take literal days. For me. Literal take days. From you. Okay. Yes. Like. Yes, where I would just feel awful for days at a time. Now, by practicing this, n- not even an hour. Yeah, you can actually cut your time down. Yes. 
it's, it's so much more efficient if you just root it out, figure it out, and solve it. Okay. So let's go over the formula again. Okay. How to overcome fear. You have an awareness of the fear. I am feeling this. Plus, this is just a math equation. Awareness of feeling plus pattern interrupt trigger thought. Let's define what a pattern interrupt trigger thought is again. A pattern interrupt trigger thought is just when you become aware of something that's happening, you have an automatic response to that thing. All right. So you're interrupting the pattern. So you interrupt the pattern. Yes. Right. So let's say you have a negative thought pattern. You're trying to escape negative thoughts. You're tired of having negative thoughts. You're tired of having negative talk. First off, become aware that everybody has it. Nobody eliminates that either. Everybody has imposter syndrome. Everybody has fear. Everybody has uh, a, a feeling of inadequacy at some point. Even... Even narcissists, because narcissists need fed things about them constantly. It's the whole point of being a narcissist, right? Yeah. It's actually a lower self-esteem. So everybody has that. So now that you're aware that everybody has that, how can we overcome that? Well, a pattern interrupt trigger thought is what builds awareness. So, okay, I'm feeling this. So I'm going to add in an automatic response. So let's say I have a negative money talk. This is a really easy one for people. I'm not worth money. I'm not worth the results that I want. I'm not worth this. I'm not worth that. It could be for a number of different reasons. We're not going um, into your childhood right now. Yeah. You can. You should. Yeah. And figure out why you feel that way. But bef before we get to that level, let's set up an automation for you. I have a negative uh, thought about money. I'm not worth it. Your automatic response, your automatic affirmation is I receive, keep, and large. <clears throat> I deserve, receive, and keep large sums of money. I deserve, receive, and keep large sums of money. I deserve, receive, and keep large sums positive of money. Positive affirmations. It's a positive affirmation, and the trigger thought will rewire your brain slowly over time. So so it's not that the negative thought goes away, but what's beautiful about this is every time you have a negative thought, it accidentally triggers three, four, five positive thoughts in a row, so they outweigh the negative. Yeah. So that's how you start to kill and overcome this fear and this thing, you're calling it anxiety. Yeah. I'll call it anxiety. This fear and anxiety that you're not worth something. So what's beautiful about this is it starts to make you feel better over time. This isn't necessarily an overnight thing, but over time you start to feel a little bit better. And if you really want to completely overcome it on a daily basis is when you have that negative thought, it automatically reaffirms in a positive manner four or five times in a row. What happens then is you take an action step. And the physical action step is where it, is where the sweet sauce is at. That's where the gold is at. Because once you take a physical action step, the brain switches from fear, which is the negative thinking, towards exploration, which is the positive thinking, and then you stay in that space. Now you're going to get results that you've never gotten before because now you've equaled fear overcome. Right. And once you do that action step, most of the time, the fear that you had, you're going to realize that it was bigger than what it actually the results actually were. You're oh, going to do the yeah. action step and you're like, whoa, this wasn't so bad. Let's do it again. It's, you'll also realize that when you take that physical action step, it inspires others. Yeah. Because they were like, I was so afraid to take that step. I saw you take this step. You got a positive result. I wanted you to get a positive result. You got a positive result and it showed me that I could get a positive result. So I took the step. Yeah. That's how you can become an influence with the people around you in a really positive way by just being an example of overcoming this fear and having a strategy and a path to do it. Oh, absolutely. That's like self-employment. When you quit your nine to five job or your steady income, everybody around you is fearful for you. And then when it works out and you become successful, everyone's like, wow, if Aisley can do that, why can't I? Turns out it doesn't have to be a nine to five job. It could also be a business <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> from recent yeah. experience. It yeah. could be a number of different yeah. things. But when you're moving towards your purpose, what else this does is when you take that physical action step, what else happens is people around you start to recognize that your mission or your purpose is so strong that it no longer matters what other people say. Yeah. Like, I'm going to put this message out no matter what anybody says. And I'm reaching that point. It's a beautiful space to be. Social media is a terrifying place. Social media <laughs> is incredible. I yeah. am having so much fun with it. Even in the in what we're specifically talking about right now. Like, you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok and... YouTube. Fa Facebook, and, obviously here on YouTube. Yeah. And yeah. So... Specifically, what we're talking about right now is, I'll just be, I'll, I'll just be fully transparent. Before making the decision to go out and be in more public space, I was in private teaching space. I had never had a video or a message go out to more than a couple thousand people. 
Yeah. Ever, I mean, ever. And I it think, was the same thousand people most of the time that yeah, you that you knew it was and you were community. comfortable with. Exactly. Yeah, a exactly. community that you were comfortable with. It was a safe space. Exactly. So it took me a while to get ready. And once I, you know, once I felt this being pulled and being called to this public space, I knew that there was going to be challenges because my message, which is not in line with traditional thinking and traditional general public traditional teachings, but I know it works because here I am. And I've taught so many other people now and so many other people have incredible results. They've changed their lives. I know it works. I know that if I'm going to share my message with people in public and it's going to go against their traditional thinking and people find their fulfillment in being right, it's going to raise some hands. Like there's going to be some confrontation. There's going to be some actions that don't seem safe. There's all these things are potentially going to happen. Especially because you're talking about something that's, it's not controversial, but it's a, it's a hot topic and it's an uncomfortable topic and you're talking about money. I'm talking about money. The most taboo topic in the world. Yeah. If you want to clear out the dinner table at Thanksgiving, ask Uncle Joe what he cleared on the old W-2. It's yeah. my favorite line. Like, you can talk about sex at the dinner table on Thanksgiving <laughs> before with your family before you can talk about money. Yeah, before you can and talk I, about I your I want to know why. Yeah. I want to know why. Because if we were having more conversations about money... Everybody would be so much more successful. Everybody would be so much better. Yeah. Everybody Everybody would have more of it. Everybody would be happier. Everybody would have more of it. And you wouldn't have to be so fearful of it. That's another... Everybody lets money control them. Yeah. So shame... Fear lives in shame. Shame lives in the shadows. It has to be silent. The second you speak it out, shame doesn't have any power anymore. So therefore, you can talk about money. So... The story, the reason I brought that up is because recently we put out some videos on TikTok and Instagram reels where it has the, the TikTok video has almost 400,000 views in three days. I've never spoken to more than a thousand or 2000 people at once. So that was different. It was not new to me because I have a TikTok that has like, yeah, I've gotten millions like, of views before. I'm like so desensitized to it at this point. Yeah. But I was like, I can't wait to see how Todd reacts to this because he's got some haters. Yeah. Oh, they're so hot. Like, because they didn't like a specific thought pattern. Yeah. They didn't like a specific understanding, like the example that I used of understanding true value, that it is actually financially smarter to own a $100,000 car than it is a $20,000 car if you can financially support it. Because the $100,000 car is always going to be worth more. So it's going to be a better true value. And you're always going to be able to get your money back when you sell it. Besides the point, we're not going to go into why that's right. Yeah, yeah. Go watch the Financial Minimalism podcast episode if you want to hear on why that is the correct correct way of thinking in the long haul. But it was just totally new. So it was interesting to me because I didn't have any fear about it after it started to bump up Mm -hmm. in viewership and comments and shares and things like that, because I recognized that for me to change the pattern thinking of people, I'm going to have to be on the front line and I'm going to have to put up with more pain than other people are going to have to behind me. Right. Because we talked about, even though you have thousands of people angry in the comments Mm -hmm. you gained literal thousands (laughs) you gained like 700 followers so 700 people and then the few that are commenting throughout that are having positive comments are standing behind you they agree with what you have to say they're not going to stand up in the comments they're not going to say that Mm -hmm. but a part of them wants to hear more yeah which is what we want we want to reach those people we want yes and then there's a quiet section too that didn't follow or didn't comment negatively that a seed's been planted. Yes. And they go, I wonder why that was. And maybe in six months they seek it out. That's all I want. I want or the maybe, conversation to start. And if we got 700 followers, Jesus only needed 12. Right. I was going to say, when you touched earlier on affirmations you give to yourself when you're fearful with money, my friends and I have a joke. We we always say, whenever one of us has like anxiety or fear, we always just say that affirmations are gaslighting yourself. <laughs> Can you define that? People are going to be like, what? Do you know what gaslighting is, right? Well, that's why I want you to define it for everybody. Oh, I hate describing gaslighting. It's, fu- it's fueling it. Yeah. Yeah. Gaslighting is like when you... Okay. So you're if somebody... Throwing, you're throwing fuel on the fire. Y- y- no. You don't think so? No. If somebody's gaslighting you, they're like altering your reality. So if you say, if I say, this is how this happened, and you say, no, this is how this happened, and you're like beating the idea into my head, and I start to believe what you're saying, even though maybe that really wasn't what happened. Like you just lied to me so much that I believe it. That's gaslighting. Oh, okay, so that, that yeah, that was a better way of explaining it. Yeah, so if you like, if you just say something so much that I start to believe it, yeah, especially if it's not true, that's gaslighting. So you're like okay. altering what I think. So whenever we do positive affirmations, we always joke that we're gaslighting ourselves. That's so, funny. Yeah. So if I'm like, I am, I am 
worth so much money. I am so humble. I am so smart. Like I'm gas. I'm just joke that I'm gaslighting myself into believing it. I'm the humblest. Yes, I am the humblest. <laughs> okay, so how does this result in success? How does this result in a stronger financial future for us? And the answer to that is because fear overcome, which is our end result of the first part of the formula, fear overcome plus time equals progress. Right. Maybe word that differently. Say, it. tell me what that means. Fear over time. Wait, fear, fear over come plus time is progress. What do you mean plus time? Okay, so so fear, so fear over come is your first result. Okay, it's the whole goal of the first part of the formula, right? right. Which is oh, this is a multi-part formula. Yeah, well, you have two or th- so the 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 beginning formula is fear or awareness awareness of your fear plus pattern interrupt trigger thought um, plus physical action step equals fear overcome. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what is actually happening when you have fear overcome and how it actually results. It actually increases your financial results for you. Like it makes your life better over time and why that is. You can actually break that down and look at it as a mathematical process. Well, yeah. Overcoming fear is going to ultimately improve your quality of life. Absolutely. So most I people, can say that firsthand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I promise it will. At first experience, I am allowed to say that. I also want to say really fast that me speaking on anxiety, this is just me speaking on my experiences. Not everybody's experience is going to be the same. So if you have a different experience or don't agree with that, teach their own. That This is just how I overcame it. And I feel like me talking about this is going to help other people. Were you fearful of talk- talking about it? Yes. And then you talked about it. Now you feel better? Yeah. Feel- and I feel like it's going to do something good for people. It, absolutely. Also, me not feeling anxiety before, I think that'll help other people who are going, I don't think I've ever felt it before. Yeah. Like, is it even real or is it not real? Like they is, something, even, is there something wrong with me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They even feel out. Of, like I have felt ousted before because I'm like, I've never really felt anything like that. Like, yeah. Is because that you, okay? Yeah. We've had this conversation. We had like a two hour long conversation one time about how we both have had different experiences and how we both like, but we be better understand each other after talking about it yeah yeah exa- I, yes i yeah because i had never felt it before after i left um the business that i left there was about a week a week and a half where it felt like i couldn't take a deep breath and that was my first experience i was like i wonder if this is what people call anxiety there it is but in my head i was like this is just comes with the territory i just made a monster change yeah. and a huge leap of faith a huge faith move like that's just going to be part. Like I took it as this is just part of it. Yeah. And other people might be seeing it as this end game of like, I'm never going to escape this. This will always be here. But the difference is that you have been practicing overcoming fear for a long time. You're aware of it and you're aware of this formula. So that's why for you, that big jump and you being able to handle it the way that you did and labeling it as just fear and the territory. Yeah. That's why other people can't do that is because they, they haven't practiced it enough and like really getting it under control. So that's why you handled it differently. Touche salesman. Touche. <laughs> yeah, that was t- You're probably right. That's that was a really good point. There's something behind these eyes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes these brain cells work together. Sometimes they're firing. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but what, what were you saying before that? You so, were talking about... The, the the second part of this is just understanding what's actually happening in the background as you are increasing your results. Like, why is that? Yeah. And the reason for that is, is I can break this out down into a couple more formulas that just focus on the first formula. You don't need to focus on these. I just want to bring awareness to these. As how it's working. Is how the, this is actually what's happening. Yeah. yeah. So once you have fear overcome, right, that's your result of the first formula. What happens is you add in plus time. So the more you practice that first formula and overcome fear, plus time equals progress. Oh, absolutely. That's what I talked about how the first time, like I used to days, now it takes me an an hour to figure it out. Exactly. So so that's progress. Compounding results. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So you're getting better over time. Yes. The first time it takes you 24 hours to overcome a fear, the next time it takes 12 hours, the next time it takes six hours, pretty soon it takes 10 minutes or five minutes or... You just see it and you're immediately like, that's the green light for me to go that direction. That's the action I need to take. So it becomes a trigger for 
action. Yeah, this also awesome. goes hand in hand with getting better at being uncomfortable. Oh, because yeah. fear is discomfort. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So what's happening in that is overcoming fear plus time equals your progress, right? So what happens after that? So when you have progress, what ends up happening is you have progress uh, plus time times what I like to call reflection. Okay. So the longer that you have progress, the longer that you've continuously practiced and the longer that you do exactly what you did, which is I'm going to reflect back and see where this is coming from. The more you reflect back, the more you're going to see, I have confidence in myself. Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh. I have trust in myself for the first time ever because I've seen myself overcome a fear on a constant basis, on a daily basis. I've overcome fear on a daily basis. This is why your level of success is in direct correlation with your ability to rise above fear on a daily basis is because over time you're going to reflect back on that and no one can take that proof from you. No one can, no one can tell you, oh, you didn't overcome that. Yes, I did. And over time, you're going to build confidence and trust in yourself. And what's really exciting about all this is once you have confidence and trust in yourself, so confidence at this point, this is like the last piece of the formula of like what's really happening in your progress and like your results really increasing in a, in, in a really radical way is you have confidence plus time pl- times your actions. So you're going to be taking more positive actions over time equals your wealth. Yes. So when you have confidence in yourself and you give yourself time, you're going to take more actions, right? Because you're not crippled by fear anymore. You're not harboring fear. The greatest way in the world to harbor fear and make sure that you never feel better is to don't take any physical steps. Don't take any physical actions towards something. Yeah. Just never make a decision and you will ensure your anxiety or your fear. You will make sure that it comes true. You'll actually pray for it at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what you'll be stuck in. So you don't want to harbor fear. That's how you harbor fear and resentment. So over time, since you've been practicing these things and you're reflecting back and you're building confidence in yourself, you have confidence plus time times your actions equals your wealth. So your wealth is going to grow and expand and explode over time because you're just taking consistent actions. And as you learn and as you get better, to your point, hey, I'm just going to progress every single day. Guess what? Guess what else is going to get better every single day? Your results. What does your results become? Money. Money is a byproduct of the results that you're getting or the actions that you're taking. Absolutely. So that's 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 the breakdown of what's happening after you overcoming fear. And that's how it all starts with just become aware of why you are afraid. And the more that you practice it, the more aware you are of it, the more you can recognize it in other people too. And it's been able to help me help other people. So when I see somebody else going through it, whether that's like a small, like they're starting a business or they're doing a new endeavor or they're taking on something that's scary to them, I'm now able to help other people with it because I've experienced it and I, I, they can watch what I did and I can recognize other people and be like, if the second you do it, you're going to feel better. So for example, I have a friend who's starting to get into real estate and he wants to do wholesaling and I went through the whole, I am terrified to get on the phone with a buyer. I'm terrified to post on social media what I'm doing and tell people this because it's something so out of my realm and it's so uncomfortable and I'm watching him do it. And it's the coolest thing to be able to be like, you need to do it right now or you're never going to do it. You need to do it right now. And then he does it and he's successful at it and he feels better about it. And watching him get more confident makes me more confident. That is why I teach. Yeah. That's why my purpose is to teach. That's why my purpose is to start an argument in a comment section. It's, it's not for the love of argument. It's for the love of opening the mind. And it has to start with stating something that you believe is true. You get your fulfillment in other people being successful. Yes. Which I is pray. a really cool passion to have. Yes. Yeah. I pray for the success of my clients. I don't pray for my own success. I pray for, I pray for the success of my clients. And your success is a byproduct of the success of your clients. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So no matter what's happening in my life, if my clients are successful, it will trickle down to me. That's why I refer them out to the proper people. That's why I refer them out to the proper businesses or the proper contacts that are going to give them the best possible experience because that will eventually find its way back to me. Yeah. Like I want them to have a good experience. That's why I pray for the success of my clients. So you being able to speak on that is very exciting to me. (laughs) It is very exciting to me because that is you practicing. It's you understanding that what you learn can be passed on. And if you pass it on to him, who else will he pass it on to? Oh, 
so many people because the people he's surrounded by have mm-hmm. that fear mindset, the fear of change, the fear of the unknown, yeah, doing so, something new. So if he gets a different result, everyone, no one will be able to argue it. Right. He will be sight now. They'll see it. Yes. The, all of these things tie together. Every episode, we just tie it into something else and it starts to make sense to me. It's like my brain is piecing the puzzle together. Yeah. Like we just, we talked about getting uncomfortable. We've, we're Now we're talking about sight and vision. Other people are going to see him do it and now they're going to be confident they could do it too. Mm-hmm. If this is the first episode that you guys are listening to or watching, congratulations. We just took your next five hours because you got to watch the first five episodes now. Sorry. But <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it means so much. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, it's very exciting to, to hear you say that because you're, abs- you're absolutely right. Yeah. If you would have told me like a year ago, two years ago that I would be buying a house right now. Mm-hmm. I would be terrified of that. The monthly payment, the mortgage. Mm-hmm. I would be, I don't know where that money's going to come from. I don't have that fear anymore. Yeah. I'm so confident that I'll be able to make that money. I'm, the money's actually the, the, the least, I don't have fear of that. Yeah, you're starting to recognize why the money is even around you right now to begin with is because of the actions that you're putting in. So you're like, if yeah. I just continue these actions, money will continue to show up. Yeah, that's why this podcast, we're not making money on this right now. No, no, this is all for free. free. We keep joking that we're running a nonprofit. (laughs) Like this is our nonprofit business, but we, we understand how results happen Yeah, and we're we're not fearful. Yeah. We're going to build some. We're so excited. And this is a new territory, how we talked about Mm -hmm. when you switch your brain from fear to adventure, you're born in a new territory and it's so exciting to us. We're not scared that we're not going to succeed. Yeah. The first time we ever hit. Well, I guess the first time we ever hit upload was like on the fifth episode that we recorded because we had so many problems with the first four. But, but the, even recording the first few, I mean, you were shaking on camera. I was the first episode. Yes, I was stuttering, shaking, terrified. I barely talked. Yeah, I wanted to cry. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, in, in Did my you have def- that anxiety feeling. Yes, I was so anxious when because in my defense, they sat me down the day that we recorded the first episode. and They're like, you're going to be on the podcast. You're on the podcast. And I wasn't supposed to be on the podcast. I was just supposed to produce them. So that was new. But. I overcame it. I did it. Cause I, you were like, you don't have to. I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to do it. Like sit down and do it. And we did it. Mm-hmm. And now it's so easy for me to sit here and talk. I'm not scared to do it anymore. Yeah. Now you have a, you, you had an awareness of the fear. You had a pattern interrupt trigger thought. You moved into physical action, which was just doing it. And now you've got fear overcome. Yeah. So how many things can you apply to that in your day? Everything. It, everything. It could be, it could be the smallest thing that's holding you back from a huge result. Because you potentially know that it's that huge result. And if I was successful, if this did go the way that I hoped, ooh, what would happen then? You know, it's scarier when you get an offer accepted on a house than when you get it declined. Because then you go, how am I going to do this again? Like, what What now? <laughs> yeah, what do I got to Wait, you said yes? Oh, I have to like buy it now. Yeah, yeah, it was so easy to put the offer in. It was like, okay, <laughs> let's just do it. And then the offer got accepted. And I was like... Oh, I'm buying the house now. Okay, awesome. So what do I have to do? And it's all unknown territory because I've never done it before. Yeah. But I'm so excited to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can now hear people in the comments going, your realtor's supposed to do this for you. That's not how it works. <laughs> Sorry. If you've never bought a house and you think the realtor's going to do everything for you. Just, You're wrong. It's just, it's, not, it's just not the case. I wish it was sometimes, but it's just <laughs> typically not the case. Luckily, she has a great, she has a great agent. He's a great guy. Um, he's going to be able to help you through a lot. He's a super knowledgeable dude that has been involved in real estate for a Thank long time. Thank you, Mike. I, t- I, call, I call him the Benjamin Button of real estate because he started at the end game, which is a title company, and then he moved into full-time investing, and now he's an agent. I'm like, pretty soon he's just going to be a renter. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, he's, moving ba- he's moving backwards in the real estate world in my opinion but like he he really knows what he's doing he's very well versed he's gonna be able to help you a ton obviously you got people in your corner but that's the whole the whole point of that is that you overcame the fear to even reach that point i want to hear about an example of the other time that you've overcome fear so like a, a one oh, of your which pattern one of the 55 would you like in the past couple, few days pick one pick the biggest one that you've dealt with in the last month oh leaving leaving the last business Okay, that was in the last month, but go off. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, no, sorry. no, no. We'll do no. Month. Do the business. That's fine because that's it, a really good example. Yeah, it wasn't the last month. It was horrifying. Yeah. Oh, I watched it. It was. It was horrifying. It, I. I. What has it been? Six months now. I don't but December. So six well, months? I took my break in November. I officially left in January. So I guess it's been six like months. five or six months. Yeah. But no, there's no day that you wake up in the morning and go, "I'm gonna leave four or five million bucks on the table." And I'm going to ask for nothing. 
but it wasn't in line. Like when you heat, when you feel called to something, like I mentioned earlier, I felt called to be more in the public space and to be uh, pushing my mission of ending financial suffering forward um, in a more aggressive way. And I, when I started to recognize that it wasn't going to, uh, I wasn't going to complete my mission where I was. You were behind a huge paywall. It was, I was terrible. Yeah. It, it, it basically minimum to work with me started at 10 grand and it went well above 30, 40, 50 grand. And you just can't reach all the people that you can reach this way. I just couldn't reach the people. You that wouldn't I'm- have reached those 400,000 people on that TikTok video. Never. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when, when that, when that pain, when that catalyst got so strong of my mission isn't going to be moving forward in this facet anymore, I was terrified. I was terrified of what other people were going to think. I was terrified of what my wife was going to say. I was terrified of the um, financial implications. I was terrified. Now, luckily, I practice everything that I teach. So that didn't become a thing at all. The financial was not. No, but in your head. Yes. The wolf is bigger. The wolf is bigger in your head. Exactly. So like financially, like nothing changed. Yeah. But at if all, anything, you're think, able to generate more actually, income. Now. Actually, financially, it even got better. Which yeah. is, oh, and I know it doesn't make sense. Maybe I can talk about that at another time. But in my head, those were the first initial fears. Yeah. And then I, which had, are all valid fears. I, you were leaving a company that you spent years building. Yeah, I spent eight years building it, and it was an eight-figure company. So right. I was going to walk away from an eight-figure company for free. Right. Yeah, I, I didn't want paid for it. I wasn't going to sell my shares. I was, I was. I wanted to pass it off. That was the right thing to do. And I still continue to believe that it was the right thing to do. I was afraid of, was I handling it correctly? Because I've never done that before. So all of it was brand new. I mean, it was crippling. I basically sat for a month on my break and didn't move because I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know how to portray it. And I didn't know how to communicate it. And I didn't know like what would happen. But once you started doing it, I can imagine that every action you took, the weight just got lighter and lighter and lighter on your shoulders it was one by one like it just started knocking them off like breaking through these ceilings of like oh i was fearful of this broke through it that wasn't as bad as i thought and it broke through the next one you know what next action wasn't as bad as i thought all the way down to uh making a video the first video on this youtube channel is my announcement yeah i had to make that video when i had the thought i was like i need to make a video and let everybody know i clicked record four seconds later because i knew if i wasn't going to click record right at that moment you weren't going to do it your fear was going to stop you yes my brain was going to find a way for me to justify not doing it and and that was not acceptable i had to tell i had to tell everybody i felt like everybody was out of that and so that was recorded it took me a month and a half to hit upload on the video that was that was the next mistake is it took too long to, to, I don't even know if I want to call it a mistake, but that was the next fear I had overcome was actually sending it out to everybody. Yeah. But when you think about it, you, it wasn't a mistake and it did take you a little longer, but you were leaving a multi-million, you were leaving millions of dollars on the table. Yeah. So to any other person that's watching this, who doesn't never dealt with that much money, they're going to, they're going to understand like that's, but yeah. for you to be able to do it at all, Mm -hmm. that's a huge step in and of itself. And you wouldn't have been able to do that if you didn't have the overcoming fear formula. Yeah. I I sat on that formula. Like I literally, I watched my own training video back on it because I have a training. If you want a full training video, like a slideshow, like a presentation, everything, there will be a link in the description down below. And if you sign up for our mailing list, I send out seven free training videos and that, that one's part of it. It's called the overcoming fear formula. So you can watch that. So definitely check that out. Free. Free. He's yeah, not selling free. something. Yeah, it's, it's, not, free. It's, it's, not, it's not paid. It's free. It's free. Yeah. So go go check it out. It's in the uh, link in the description down below. It'll be labeled "Overcoming Fear Formula," and I watched my own training back, and I just kept coming back to the same answer that my mission is more important than my personal opinion on it. My personal opinion of my fear. My personal opinion of the thoughts of others. So I kept coming back to that. So that's why. I'm, Finally, it got to the point where my pattern interrupt trigger thought was more powerful than the fear. Yeah. So then I took a physical action step, physical action step. Okay, write the letter to the internal team. Let everybody know internally that I'm moving on. And then it was record the video or upload the video. And then it was um, go through the strenuous process of... Because if you want to hand something off well and it makes a lot of money, 
there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. There's team members, there's uh, management, there's uh, there's the internals, there's the back end, there's, there's software, there's so there's, many especially things. Especially when you're the face of it, pulling yeah. yourself out of that altogether. Yes. Uh, yeah. There's bookkeeping, there's accounting. There, there's so many moving pieces. You'd be blown away. I thought it was going to take two weeks to transfer the company. It took three and a half months. Yeah. Which, looking back on it now, that might have been really fast, too, because we're dealing with attorneys, we're dealing with um, emotions, we're dealing with a number of different things, and the whole goal was to pass it off well, that way it could continue in a healthy fashion, right? Yeah. So even every single one of those things, signing the documents was terrifying, going to meet the partner was terrifying, Uh, having the initial discussion that, like, hey, I think this should be yours was terrifying, the letting the public know was terrifying, there, there was this is just therapy session now the, i every time i said no i had my therapy session already though we talked about my anxiety so it's yeah. your turn yeah. <laughs> it was i i i went through so much that nobody could ever imagine because i was just constantly practicing that formula okay how do i how do i get over that like how do i make sure that this progress is healthy and am i willing to lose certain things along the way because when a decision like that is made, not everyone's going to come along. And it's part of the, that. That's part of that part of the territory thing for me is when I was like, man, I couldn't take a deep breath for a week and a half. Part of the territory, people not agreeing with your decision, part of the territory, people not agreeing with your education, part of the territory, people not agreeing with the way that you've decided to either move on in my personal situation, or maybe you leave your job to commit to investing in real estate full time or starting your own business. People aren't, and not everyone's going to be happy about that. Nobody is going to agree with everything you do. It's just right. not going to happen. And growing and like growing into what you're doing now, it's just part of the territory is losing people. And Un- un- I say unfortunately so, but there's probably a very there's. It's I mean, fortunate you're, too. You're pr- you're pruning. Yeah. You know, for you to for you to meet your maximum potential, there is going to be uncomfortable pruning at times. Yeah. And just coming to coming to grips, coming to realization of that. And understanding that it's okay. It's okay that they don't uh, agree with you. It's okay that they move in a different direction. It's okay that you move in a different direction. It's okay to be in different seasons. It's all of that is actually beneficial for everybody involved exactly. at the end of the day. Yeah. And talking about how you were saying, you you know, new ceiling becomes a floor. Ceiling go through, it becomes a floor. As you're doing this, these are big decisions. And now you have that as a precedent for next time you have a big decision to make. Because ultimately, this isn't going to be the last time that you have to make a big decision like that. Right. And there's going to be something that feels bigger than you. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about you, you were dealing with a few million dollars. You think about like Elon Musk. How many times has he had to make a decision like that? And every time it gets bigger, every decision gets bigger and bigger. And it was probably really terrifying the first five times. He made a decision the other day. I was watching an interview with him. That he made a decision the other day that, to let go of one of the advertisers, and it cost him forty million dollars. And y- you but think <laughs> so? so that, that that was that was one of the ways that when I was working through this with my wife, I let her know, "Hey, I'm really like this is this is an, like this problem is just so close to our face right now that this is really an ant hill that I'm turning into a gigantic mountain because exactly. I'm not talking about." A, uh, a, a publicly traded company. I'm not a Fortune 500 company. I'm not on the S and P 500. I'm not dealing with hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm dealing with eight figures. Is it a lot of money? Yeah, but is it nine figures? No. Is it a billion dollars? No. So if I'm going to get to a a different stage financially in the future, if I want to, and push my mission forward or focus on my mission, it's not here. So I have to leave this behind. I have to. I can't drag it with me. It's not fair to the people. It's not fair to the client. It's not fair to anybody. So the best thing that I can possibly do is provide in a way that is makes more sense for the people that are that I'm focused on within my mission. So and that's at a lower price point. That is public teachings, as we're doing right this second. That's uh, more availability. That's one-on-one. That's all kinds of different approaches that I can start reaching people in different ways that they can get the results that I want them to be able to reach. And what you did is you put it in perspective. Go watch that episode too. <laughs> but we you do put have it, a perspective you episode. Literally I told you, about, if you haven't watched our first five episodes, I'm sorry, your next five hours is taken. You talked about in the perspective episode about how problems are sometimes in your face and you just need to step back. That's yeah. exactly what you said. It was an anthill, but at yeah. the time it seemed like Mount Everest. I kept repeating that to myself. I'm like, look, it's a, like the company's meant a lot to me. It's been eight years, but it hasn't been 20. 
It's not a billion dollar company. It's not something that is going to affect hundreds of thousands of lives. It's going to affect affected a, a thousand, you know, a couple thousand lives. But it wasn't 10,000 lives. It wasn't 100,000 lives. And ultimately, they're not going to be all be impacted negatively because even if they are, even if 100 of those lives are impacted in a way that maybe wasn't the most ideal, you are re- you just reached 400,000 people that your message is going to. Here is a perfect example of what you just said. That's amazing that you just said that. So I was terrified of it affecting 1,000 people, right? Negatively. Yeah. of the people came to me inspired and excited and are a part of what we're doing now. Exactly. But the fear was so much bigger. My fear was so much worse. I was like, I don't want this to derail the momentum of these people because they feel something and or don't understand something. And that was just not the case. I'm telling you 99.9% that much. I can count on one hand how many, uh, negative results I had out of thousands of people. Yeah. So it's like, that's a pretty darn good ratio. It is. It's pretty darn good. So what was in my head was far worse than what reality turned into. Yeah. Which I'm yeah. eternally grateful for. So to tie it back to when we started talking about fear and anxiety, when a lot of the time when I have anxiety, it starts with this. Most of the time it's something so silly, like the, like one conversation that I had three hours ago and it's one sentence that was said that I'm just unhappy with, that it's going to stick in my brain. I'm going to think about it for hours. So when you talk about, you know, new ceilings and things, you leaving multi, multi multi-million dollar business, Mm -hmm. that really puts it into perspective. So every time I make a decision that's bigger than that and I overcome fear, it really does help with my anxiety and it helps with the small things. Those little conversations that are just silly and the one thing doesn't bother me as bad anymore. Yeah, and it, it allows you to it allows you to step into a space where your mind switches to exploring. Yeah. That's really the key. So if you can just get your mind to exploring it as opposed to filling unknown space with fear, you're gonna start getting better results. Yeah, when you start looking at the unknown as something exciting and an opportunity rather than fear and terrifying and scary. So what's a great challenge for everybody then? Ooh. I think one? I think for the formula is to reflect on use this as your challenge. You use use this as your go to to end this podcast to, to end this episode. Here's your action step if you want to if you want to get a really quick result. Start thinking about what you're fearful of, and write it down, and write everything that comes into your head. So to your point, like hey, I started journaling. I, this is what I want you to do. I want you to journal it. I want you to write it down. Like what am I actually fearful of? right now not having enough money criticism people not liking me things like that all of that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. those those are perfect examples so if you do that you're bringing awareness yes that's the first step you're becoming aware yep yeah and and then you need to next time it happens the pattern interrupt yeah so what you're doing is you're building awareness on what's going on and what it'll do is i want you to be able to build your pattern interrupt trigger thought yeah so if you keep telling yourself negative things about money Let's build you a trigger thought. The example I used earlier was I deserve, receive, and keep large sums of money. So you can use that one. There, It's written for you. Use that one. Take it. Steal it. Please. It's all yours. Use it. I still use it to this day. Gaslight yourself into believing that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Gaslight yourself. Gaslight yourself. Yeah. Brainwash yourself into positivity. It's perfectly fine. And it works. It sounds crazy, but it works. That's how affirmations work. It absolutely works without question over time. So... What I want you to do is I want you to develop whatever the pattern interrupt trigger thought is. That way, the next time you have a negative thought, since you know that you have fears going on, the next time you have a negative thought, this will automatically trigger inside your head and it'll you'll repeat it back to yourself accidentally. You'll get to the point where you will accidentally do it to yourself and you'll just reinforce yourself in a positive way instead of a negative way. So let's build that trigger thought. That's what I want you to do. That's the challenge. Make sure that's what you go do. And what I want to do, what I really would love to hear is what is your pattern interrupt? Like, you know, mine now. So what is know mine? Yeah. 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 Walked her through mine. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to know what yours is. We want to know what yours is. Put it in the comments down below. Hey, what are you fearful of? What have you dealt with in the past? What is your new trigger thought? 
And then up on the screen, you're going to be able to find the full playlist to our podcast. Since again, if this is the first one you're listening to, we accidentally took the first half five out in the next five hours of your life by listening to all five of those episodes since we tied so many in here. But you'll be able to check out that playlist here so you guys can go watch those. So we want to be able to hear from you. We look forward to interacting with you. Thanks for watching. Until the next episode. No more fear. No more fear. Well, well fear is no, 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 no